one one piece of behavior I forgot to ask you about. Uh, yeah. So T Rex engaging cannibalism. Yeah, almost certainly. Well, certainly, I think we've got. Um, so there's a T Rex bone with a T Rex embedded tooth in it with, <laughs> so o- with awesome. overgrowth. Yeah. There's. I think it's. I want to say it's an Albertosaur rather than T Rex, but there is a there is a Tyrannosaur jaw in Alberta with a T-Rex tooth stuck in it, and you can pull the little tooth out. Um, and then there's a T-Rex foot bone with these distinctive feeding traces on them. And this actually goes back to that early point about T-Rex being weird, being the only big carnivore it's an environment. Because if this was even Mongolia at that time, but anywhere else, there's three or four or five big carnivores. And so you find a bone and it's chewed up by a big carnivore, we don't know who did it. But when you see a big bone chewed up in a t-rex ecosystem well you know if it's anything bigger than this you know it was t-rex and so when it's a t-rex bone with t-rex bite marks yep QED, 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 yeah so it, it must have been that's fascinating isn't it that, that they would attack themselves their My, own species cannibalism turns up in a whole bunch of stuff um but it's not. It's very rare as like a fairly habitual behavior. So, but there's several reasons you might be engaging in, or, or rather, teeth marks might tell various yeah. stories. So it could be just fighting for dominance, right? It it could, but it's unlikely. And in this case, so again, we see there are loads of facial injuries in tyrannosaurs, in carnivorous dinosaurs generally, but particularly tyrannosaurs. They have really beaten up heads, like half or even two thirds of adults have scarring and facial injuries, but you see healing on it, whereas this foot does not show healing, and it's got multiple different bites. The idea that you'd bite a foot whilst fighting someone and then go back and bite that one foot again, yeah. that's pretty, not impossible, but pretty unlikely. So it look, looks like it's eating, not fighting. Yeah, and they're more like the feeding scrape traces than they are the big puncture wounds. So again, not impossible, but very weird for so that to fascinating. occur as a fight. Um so yeah, they're 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 fighting. They're fighting probably quite a lot. Um, but whether or not you actually eat something that you've killed or that you stumble across as a body, it definitely happens occasionally, otherwise we wouldn't have the record of that. But there's a reason carnivores often don't eat carnivores and particularly don't eat their own species, which is parasitism. You know, carnivores in general are loaded with parasites because they spend their whole lives eating food which has parasites and stuff in it and so they tend to accumulate a lot of them what's the one thing that's going definitely going to have the most parasites in it that can infect you as for example a lion it's another lion that eats the exact same stuff that you do so whilst it is food and particularly if you just want a big fight you might want to eat in general cannibalism is pretty rare because it's generally not a good idea if there's other food available. But yeah, if you're starving to death or, you know, the other guy ripped your leg half off and you don't think you're going to walk for six weeks, not that you'd think, but you know what I mean? Like, and now and now there's a body in front of you as two tons of meat. Well, maybe you should tuck in. This is so fascinating. Like, once again, figuring out this puzzle. <laughs> yeah. And like, what does cannibalism tell you? You're piecing together the story of T-Rex, their their life, their hunting life, their social life, from their evolution to their biology to their behavior. It's so fascinating. Yeah, we we try to, but the thing is, it's 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 always getting better. Which is so that's the, what I tried to finish on in my book on behavior. Is I felt I'd written a couple of hundred pages of we keep screwing this up. We've overstated this. I think people have misunderstood this. This you know, like the trackway stuff. And it's like, this is not as confident as we think. You need to look at these alternate explanations. This behavior shows that that behavior probably doesn't correlate the way you said it does, yada, yada, yada. And it's like, I now feel like I've just written a book trashing my entire field and all my colleagues, or at least many of my colleagues. And then, then you, you flip it on its head and going, we've got techniques that were undreamed of 10 years ago. We've got data streams that were undreamed of 10 years ago and we've actually got a much better understanding of living species and then on top of that we're just constantly finding new animals you know we have not just new species which are often i think a lot less important but just new specimens of ones we know because again it's building up that database you know we drifted off to about sexual selection but like yeah you if you want to know growth one or two animals doesn't tell you how an animal a species grows 50 or 100 
does. And then that reveals a hell of a lot more about things like sexual dimorphism and growth rate and how vulnerable juveniles are and population structure and maybe how they're reproducing. So I'd like to think I knocked down, <laughs> I think I knocked down a few towers that probably a few people were fond of, but I think we have the raw materials to build much better, stronger edifice of behavior. Um, but as you say, it's it's always going to be based around often very piecemeal evidence and like possibilities and probabilities rather than certainties. 